how to imitate good, well, welcome, love, send, support those who are faithful to the truth. Like Demetrius is in verse 12. Like Gaius' example that John talks about in verses 5 through 8. He says he loves them by putting forth effort for them. He sends them, supports them because they're faithful to the truth. That's how we imitate good. We don't feel threatened by other church leaders or other Christians who may be better teachers than us or maybe better preachers or may have a more fruitful ministry. It's a real temptation for especially church leaders to be like, nah, we don't, we don't need them. You guys just need to listen to me. And that's a temptation for people because they, they want to be seen as the one that is wise, the one that you should listen to. You don't need to listen to them. You need to listen to me. No, we shouldn't do that. Anybody who has a good testimony is worth listening to. And I mean a good testimony, meaning their life lies, lines up with the truth. They teach the truth. Not just they have a great conversion story. That's not what I mean by testimony here. We should welcome, love, sin, support those who are faithful to the truth and never be threatened by them. Number three, how to imitate good. We're working backwards. That was four. Now three, introduce the church to faithful teachers. Content to have your name forgotten. If Diotrephes was a pastor or a leader, we don't know if he really was. It seems like he somehow just usurped the authority of the church and got some sort of little following that gave him power in this local church so that he could excommunicate people or he could threaten other believers. And it's like, where were the other faithful Christians? How did that happen? Somehow, he had a grip on that local church. And he didn't want anyone else to speak to the church. John writes a letter, no. John has the authority of Jesus. Dodge says, no, you listen to me. I want you to say, I follow Diotrephes. We shouldn't do that. We should introduce the church, as it is mine and Pastor Nate's job to introduce you to other faithful teachers that you can benefit from, from Sunday to Sunday, that you can listen to podcasts of, faithful authors that will help you grow in your knowledge of who Jesus is and knowledge of the scriptures. And we should be content to have our name forgotten. 99.999% of faithful Christians in the history of the world, you don't know their name. We, we know a very small percentage of people because they were either towering intellects in what they preached or what they taught, or maybe the Lord just because of his own sovereign purposes blessed that ministry they were doing and it was really fruitful, so we remember their name. 99.99% of faithful Christians, none of us know their name. Because there's only one name that really is worth remembering. What's funny is Count Nicholas Zinzendorf, you probably don't know who that is, but some of you might because he is most famous for saying, preach the gospel, die, and be forgotten. And we go, man, that's good. But we remember his name. So it's a little bit funny. When you say something right, then his name's remembered. But Zinzendorf is right. We should be content with people growing in likeness to Jesus, no matter who it's coming from. Diotrephes did not want that. He was concerned with being first, being preeminent. So how do we imitate good? Support missionaries. Introduce other people to faithful teachers content to have your own name forgotten. Number two, bow to the Bible's teaching because in it, prophets and apostles speak on behalf of the Lord. You want to imitate good? Whatever is written, that settles it. I should believe it. I should do it. Period. If God commands it, that settles it. If God says this is what he's like, even if I don't like it, I accept it, I believe it, I acknowledge it, I confess it, I teach it. We must. Diotrephes did the opposite. 
He didn't acknowledge the authority of the scriptures, the authority of the apostles. 99.999% of unfaithful people, their name's not remembered either. There's a sliver of unfaithful people that's not remembered. You really don't want to be one of those sliver. <laughs> Diotrephes' name made the scripture because he's a negative example of someone who wanted to be preeminent. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be any of the other wicked or evil either. He rejected the authority of the scriptures. If you want to imitate what is good, what is righteous, then bow to the Bible. And you should be regularly acquainted with reading things in the scripture that you'll go, I don't really like that. But yeah, because you're not right. You're not perfect. Neither am I. God is perfect. God is righteous. He is right. So you're going to frequently read things in the Bible that brush up against the way you think things should be. You should be regularly acquainted with that. You should read the book of Judges probably and go, what? Yeah, because you're not right. And we think differently than God. And he is righteous. We must bow to the Bible's teaching on everything it says and realize that the culture is trying to constantly get us to compromise. To reject what the scripture says about marriage and sexuality. To reject what the scripture says about gender roles. Male and female. And you, you don't get to choose which one you are. But the culture is just saying, no, that's ridiculous. That's hate speech. You can't do that. God is a God of love, so if someone wants to do it, just be loving. It's like, no, loving is saying, that's not right. That's wrong. That's evil. That's actually the opposite of what the Lord says in his word. When people try to get us to compromise on anything, we just need to know that the culture is always trying to do that. And they're never going to like us. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. Put that on your church sign. That's what the Lord Jesus tells us. Thank you.